Clayton Christensen talked about how your focus should not be on finding a target customer and catering towards the customer, but rather finding the job that a particular thing is serving and focusing on enhancing the job. McDonald's succeeds in this idea, but at the same time fails. An example of the way McDonald's subtly portrays this idea is through their blogs. They realize that it isn't only other fast food restaurants that are their competition. They are really competing with people's values such as environmental concerns, animal rights, nutritional value, etc. The job that McDonald's needs to do is provide guilt-free food that doesn't go against people's values. They employ their blogs to do this and have very informative blogs that delve into topics such as dispelling rumors about McDonald's beef, which defends their beef purchasing practices. They also have blogs about obesity, environment, etc. These blogs allow them to talk about the issues and answer questions in a crafted way in text without having to be put on the spot and make sure they have all the information possible. It also gives people a way to actively participate and join in on what they call the conversation. The site also showcases all of their initiatives and good works against things people accuse them of. McDonald's also diverges from Christensen's idea because they have a whole bunch of different websites to cater to different groups of people, which we'll cover later. They're trying to put too much emphasis on target groups in some respects instead of the job. Clayton Christensen also talked about the layered circle, where essentially all things familiar and expensive lie in the middle, and as you expand out from the center to the outer ring, you get to where innovations take place and things are cheaper and more accessible. These items are not the most ideal, nor have the best functionality, but they provide availability and eventually get better and go towards the center. An example of McDonald's use of this innovation is the free Wi-Fi in 2010. Wi-Fi customers had to pay for it used to be in the center of the ring, but now it is the free Wi-Fi. Right now, this version of wireless isn't ideal because lots of people are on it, so it probably isn't as fast. And also, it is an unsecure network, so you aren't as protected. With future innovations, this might be resolved, and maybe in the future they will be able to take away their declaration of quote-unquote free Wi-Fi with a statement that says, Connectivity and or usage fees may apply and be required for Wi-Fi services. Access details, fees, and availability is subject to change without notice. So while their free wireless isn't perfect, they have the availability, and in time there will probably be free wireless without conditions because of these innovations. We talked a lot about privacy in response to speakers like Victor Meyer Schoenberger. The McDonald's site also deals with the issue of privacy, just like any other business on the internet. You would think you wouldn't need a privacy policy for their site, but they do have an online store that you can purchase things from. They have cookies, collect names and addresses if submitted, share this information with their subsidiaries, etc. Nothing out of the normal. And they also have different privacy policies for different countries, which I thought was pretty interesting. For example, this was in South Africa's privacy policy, but not the USA's. It says, McDonald's reserves the right to use or disclose any information as needed to satisfy any law, regulation, or legal request to protect the integrity of the site, to fulfill your request, or to cooperate in any law enforcement investigation or an investigation on the matter of public safety. McDonald's also has the terms of service, pretty much ridding them of any possible blame. In Dunbar's video, he discussed his findings of how sharing experiences releases more endorphins, thus making the experience more valuable. Interactivity has more of an impact on people. McDonald's has seemed to recognize the value of interactivity because their site is full of things you can interact with. You can take a quiz on how much you really know about the food you eat at McDonald's, and of course the correct answers are always the best answers. They have games and puzzles on the kids page. They have a McNuggets page where they ask you how do you McNugget? A section of that is the Champion Kids and links to all of their blogs about how their inspirational journey that McDonald's is providing for them has changed their lives. Many of the speakers, one way or another, referred to homophily, an idea that Dana Boyd introduced. McDonald's caters to homophily almost too much, I would argue. Each country that McDonald's is in has its own site. And within that unique site is the different groups that are relevant to that country. In the United States alone, McDonald's has a separate page for Latinos, a page for Blacks, and another page for Asians. There are also pages for kids, pages for parents, students, and media, and even for Good Samaritans. Segmenting the site, segmenting the site helps McDonald's do obvious things like localize the menus to fit the region's tastes. But this segmentation also helps to monopolize the use of homophily 
birds of a feather flock together and cater to the stereotypical issues. In the USA, students tend to be exposed to the more activist issues, so the page designed for them addresses all of those issues, such as dispelling beef rumors. The site for African Americans is called 365 Black. This site focuses on what McDonald's believes to be important for that community. It states that at McDonald's, we believe that African American culture and achievement should be celebrated 365 days a year, not just during Black History Month. That's the idea behind 365black.com. It's a place where you can learn more about education, employment, career advancement, and entrepreneurship opportunities and meet real people whose lives have been touched by McDonald's, like the unique African baobab tree, which nourishes its community with its leaves and fruit. McDonald's has branched out to the African American community, nourishing it with valuable programs and opportunities.